All right, good evening, guys. Kenneth Tortoise Capital. This is the nightly strategy podcast for June 21st, 2021. And uh, we're going to see the power of the uh, the channeling and the overreaction mechanical systems um, at work once more again today. So uh, yesterday in the health check, you know, we've had we had three uh, pretty strong selling days in a row. And um, and that left the market in this overbought condition, or I'm sorry, oversold condition. It had made a new 10-day low. It was right down here at the C minus one, um, and we saw just about every symbol uh, in those two mechanical systems were triggering um, a a buy at the open today. And uh, in spite of the futures being weak most of the weekend, they did firm up before the open, and there was a uh, micro gap up. I don't know if that's a micro gap. I'd say it's a some reasonable reasonable gap up, and then did nothing but uh, put in a one and a half ATR move to the upside to get through the Bollinger Band mean, through the RL10, and just into this descending dragon. So we're, um, we're recovering. In fact, that was so good, that recovery, that the RL30, which had started to collapse, um, reversed and then and started to rotate back up. So the slope of the RL30 resumed its upward motion. That's a good thing. Um, the PSAR has flipped and so that's that little bit of downward decay is a cause for concern until we can basically breach you know above 425 we got to get through 425 for that really to be the case because by the time this rolls over it's going to probably start looking you know more like this once once it starts to curve that's going to look like this um so as this move starts moving up, it's going to have to, that RL or the uh, PSR will start to curl downward. Uh, and um, so we've got to get through that really to, uh, to get back to a peak. Uh, let's see. The uh, slope of the RL10 is still down. Um, but if we get another up day like tomorrow, then that thing would end up being a turning point in the RL10, and it would have held above the Bollinger Band mean, which means that we would be ready to experience um, an RLXD entry somewhere around in here. I'm going to say that could be in... Um, you know, even as early as Wednesday, we could see that if it gets above 423, somewhere out in here, uh, basically leaving the river, um, that would constitute pro where a um, RLXD would probably hit somewhere in that vicinity. So we'll be stalking for that. You know, on the other hand... Um, You know, this could just as easily turn into a uh, into a critical state to the downside, and give us something like this. Oops. To come down and retest the Bollinger Band mean, and then a second leg down to test the 10-day low. Um, which is where we'd want to have two positions short by that time. So to me, uh, I would treat the uh, Bollinger Band mean as the important uh, as the important support level here. I think I'm going to draw my line in the sand right there, like at 418 and a half, and say that's the one. That's the price level I think that has to hold for this to 
be a buy on dip opportunity. I mean, what we're looking for is something like um, is something like this action over here, where it penetrated, got down to the Bollinger Band mean, but held. This one got a little bit deeper, but if it can hold here at the Bollinger Band mean um, in that region, uh, I'd be pretty happy with that. And then, um, then it has to get through uh, the hump of the dragon, leave the river, you know, get through the PSAR above the RL10 high and then the all-time high. And then this is where it's free and clear, above 426. So we're, you know, we're six bucks away from that. That's a percent and a half. That's a little over an ATR. So that's within range. And if it does do that, then we would look at we would look at this whole price action in here as a buy on dip opportunity, much like much like these two were buy on dip opportunities. And this one was a buy on dip opportunity. And uh, you know, that that would be what a grinding bull looks like the only worry i have here is that the you know the uh the slope of the dragon which had gone negative well at least it's gone back to basically flat and is ready to posture in either direction so i still think we're at a critical state here this was a nice one day rally let's see how let's see if it has legs and can continue or if that was just a you know um a, uh, a bear trap, you know, where it sells off harshly, gets one day of joy, and then and then collapses down through here. So the first line of defense is the Bollinger Band mean, and the second one is the 10-day low. And if it leaves the 10-day low, then we've got to be short, because then um, the next one is uh, way over here. At 411, if that breaks, then it's clearly, you know, three legs down and failing. And then it's coming down to the Z3 line at 404. So cautiously optimistic. Today was a good first day in the bag, um, plus one to the overreaction and channeling signals. And um, we're going to see some nice trades on that one. All set up by this weekend's review, by the way. The um, trade frames that we set uh, into motion from the weekend review that considered the upside as well as the downside all paid off pretty well today. All right, so let's see what worked. So the S&P uh, at 1.43% strong move. The diamonds were even better at 1.75, and then the Russell, the strongest, at 2.14. That's very, very good. When the speculative index is the strong one, um, you like to see that. The things that were better than the S&P, um, Brazil and materials, again. Uh, finance, Wheaton, wood, and oil. Uh, we talked extensively about finance being the most likely winning sector uh, if the market were able to get some traction today, and so that turned out to be the case. Um, uh, I will say uh, the other lumber was pretty good. Uh, energy, okay, energy 3.21, oil exploration 4.8, um, Simon Property Group is our commercial real estate guy at 5%. And then the companies, Devon Energy, 7%. Alcoa, Cliff, John Deere, and U.S. Steel. So when the sector is working, when the market is up and the sector is better, it's never surprising when the specials do even better than the sector. You know, the sector did 1.6. U.S. Steel did 2.6 etc. And the cliff is in there at 3%. Pretty nice. Alright, to the downside. You know, I was really gratified. I had uh, four players from college came back to help me run the show tonight. It was it was great seeing all the kids back all growing up. Um, 
one of them's getting uh, is going to be commissioned in the Air Force here in a couple months. So just pretty proud of her. Um, so to the downside, um, blended material or uh, blended commodities, one and a quarter. Japan, Arc Genomics, uh, S and P Biotech, S and P Tech, Marijuana, um, Mexico, Lithium Batteries, uh, S and P Discretionary, uh, Arc um, Innovation, all between one and a half percent, one percent and half a percent. So all good, but not as strong as the market. That's important to remember. Um, S&P um, Staples, 0.5. Um, agriculture and Fangs, 0.3, and then basically flat. Now we're getting into the negative territory. We got clean energy giving up one and a quarter. Uh, moonshots, 1.8. Uh, blockchain 2.3, then the whole Bitcoin and Ethereum complex down 7, 8, and 10 percent. And the VIX off 6.2 percent, so uh, that's a vote towards the long side once more. So the speculative disruptors that were strong Friday gave up some gains this week. So Coinbase, Virgin Galactic, Squarespace, Tesla, PayPal. So this was old school, uh, all U.S. all the time, and uh, and it was following the sectors and uh, rewarding, you know, basic mom and pop blocking and tackling kinds of companies, uh, strong companies with strong balance sheets that are rebuilding America. So that's kind of what's working. All right, let's take a look at uh, the trades from the gang. Oh, they asked me to uh, write another essay for the Tharp Institute. This is what I sent them. I'll just show that to you real quick. Uh, so what I told them was that, uh, yeah, we're preparing our updated course and foundations to begin the first week of July and uh, adding the insights from the folks that just completed the 10-week course. And then I, I shared with them three links from this weekend. Um, the first one was the short FAQ. It was about 13 minutes. That was kind of the wrap-up FAQ for um, the foundations. Uh, the second one, the second link was the previous weeks, which I thought was really an extensive review of a lot of the manage, money management ideas, um, some psychology ideas, and mastering the patterns. And then uh, I wanted the folks to hear the Sunday evening uh, strategy podcast because I thought we did a nice job of laying out the market in both directions. We considered the possibility of uh, big strong moves in these abnormal times in either direction and we got an abnormal move this time to the upside which was maybe more surprising than the downside but uh, um, I think the time that we spent talking about overreaction and channeling and looking at the historical performances sort of made the argument why you have to consider them in a serious way when those signals fire and uh, I think of those if you listen to all three of those links again, um, you'll get these big six ideas for sure. The paradox of trying not to try when you're trying to cultivate a healthy, useful trading mindset. Trying not to try is, just feels funny. And Edward Slingerland talks about that, um, how to achieve uwe, effortless action through you know, some ancient Chinese philosophy. Which has an advantage that it stayed pretty grounded. It never got into the weird, uh, critical um, narrative um, that infected a lot of uh, postmodern 
thinking in uh, Europe and the West, uh, it always stayed pretty practical in terms of sociology and politics and uh, individual psychology. Um, I thought this weekend we did a nice job of systematically framing trades with our fractal patterns in all the time frames and talked about how to create uh, integrated trading plans. We talked about um, how to use a review of your trades and the feedback from others the same way a football coach might use uh, game film. Um, and I thought this one was really important was the idea that the charts you post in the chat room to get feedback on are the ones that document your largest learning um, insights, not necessarily your biggest trades in terms of R, but the trades that taught you the most about yourself and about your trading. Those are the ones that you want to share in order to document the, the process. So it's not just the big wins. Um, and then I thought we did a nice job of examining the um, – the market health check for SPY and showing why this was such a critical state coming into today and then how to use that to help set up um, sector trades and individual stock trades. And then finally, um, some lessons learned about how to best use the feedback that you get from the chat room and from this, from the nightly podcast, um, that if you look at those charts and then you try to figure out what feedback other people are going to give you. Then you can listen to their feedback and then compare the feedbacks. And that will give you accelerated learning when it comes to developing the coach's eye. So I thought those six big ideas were especially useful um, from this weekend's set of videos. So I want to just recap that with you. All right, let's see what the gang got here. Um, all right, so this is the um, uh, the DAX, it looks like. Uh, so here is a... Um, uh, so we missed the morning trade, so there was like one, two, three legs up with a measured pullback that was an RLXD, and now you can see the Kata 2 gets you those green moves. So get used to seeing that. And then a Z3 pinch. And then this breakdown and a collapsing dragon was available. But if you don't take those, it at least alerts you to uh, the potential for a recovery trade to get back to those previous highs, which it did. And so this is a beautiful SSC. Um, the stop could be a little tighter to the PSAR and the RL10, not the, necessarily the RL30. And that would give you uh, maybe one and a half are on this move up. That's a reasonable exit there. Um, the short is worth a shot because you have a high and a lower high. This almost feels like a, um, you know, head and shoulders. And then this represents a collapsing dragon breakdown and it's leaving the river. So that's a good shot. That's a great exit. Um, I think the, um, um, the PSAR flip was available, but I don't mind waiting for the Z3 pinch breakout. I, I think that's all right. It didn't follow through, so that's a great scratch. Um, there was another um, Z3 pinch breakout available and an SSC available too. So there were more trades, especially in this early recession and the great big sell-off, but still that's pretty good. Um, this is a positive expectancy day, and you can get more out of this trade by tightening up the execution stop anyway to like bottom of the dragon or the um, or the piece are. Um, this is some grinding, um, and the idea was from the learning journal, uh, the idea of being able to reduce the minimum manageable risk box and get out sooner when it's not working. So, this trade here, number one, could certainly get out a little sooner. Um, I think the entry at three could have been sooner on the um, when it switched to summer. What was available, and then a sniper exit up in here would would give you just a little bit more. This is one that we can get better on when it um, 
comes down and finds support at Z minus 2 and you get a 1, 2, 3. This might have gone a little bit earlier on a money management basis because it had five minutes to fail further and it did not. Uh, I would be tempted to just take that one as it re-enters the dragon and just be done with it. And that would give you another half an hour. Um, this is a great stop and reverse. I think you can take that here at the um, uh, at the RLXD or when it crosses the VWAP and you get get in about two bars earlier. And then again, the sniper exit, especially it comes up, touches Z2, gives you a one, two, three, and then it keeps giving you lower highs on each descending bar. Um, we could tighten that up. This is a great short, a great cover, a great re-entry. So I just think this was... Um, this was pretty nice. Um, I think if you tighten up this exit on one, um, and then you get a better re-entry on three and five, you end up uh, making this a nice day. But still positive expectancy, and I'm gratified to see um, taking to heart the lessons about um, the learning value of studying um the charts and the idea of reducing the um, MMRB is kind of key. Okay, so good work. Um, this one is a there's a Z3 pinch breakdown, especially when this crosses the RL270. You got to smash that, and then when the RL270 starts to roll downward, you can smash that in here when it in that pocket or at the RLXD. That is such a screaming short with a second entry down here when this RL10 barely budges. And then I think you should be getting a tighter stop on the RLXD and the PSAR flip instead of two bars later. Um, then that would lead you to probably scratching. Um, uh, you could have covered where you entered. Then that would, re and then a uh, sniper exit here. Still, that's a reasonable minus one. Uh, uh, very nice re-entry. And I might have been tempted to uh, to take this one two three exit up in here, uh, especially to pay for the minus one. That would actually help you um, uh, quite a bit. And then if you're going to enter here, you can tighten up that MMRB by using the PSR instead of that full box. That's pretty good work there, though. Um, here's Ken H using the power of. Um, the leverage Dow and the um, the overreaction in the channeling, um, so he gets a a very nice um, opening range five minute entry. So it gaps up, sells off briefly, stays above the VWAP, basically finds support at yesterday's Z3, and then gets uh, on the new high, a cot of two, a cot of two, a cot of two another continuation. So he gets six stickers into this thing and brings in 8R and then converts a piece to the swing trade uh, with a with this re-entry here. That's just as, uh, as nice as you could want. And that's what that orderly directional move when the big boys that sold off those other positions in the great selling are wanting to come back and start buying inventory again. That's what this looks like. And uh, long and strong, just very well done. And nice conversion to a swing. Paid for with market's money. Um, and this is the afternoon in Udow. Uh, another five and a half. So that's 13 or 14 with a swing position that's completely paid for. There's an SSC he did not take. Uh, a Kata 2 he did not take. Then the Z3 pinch breakout he did take. Sniper, Kata 2 re-entry. Sniper, re-entry on momentum. And uh, scratch, except for the piece that was converted to a swing. Hard to get better than that. And you can see on the rebound um, trade on the daily, there's still quite a distance to go to get back to fair value. So there's more. More potential coming. Uh, then the final one here on GE. Um, this is an hourly, daily, weekly. So this was a nice uh, RLXD front running the SSC by hitting it 
at the um, at the PSR minus one dot with a nice tight stop uh, to the bottom of the RLXT and deep in the money and um, and a reasonable price target to the upside. The ten day highs at another seven percent higher. So this is well postured. Uh, it it found support where it has found support many times before, and in each case, significant run up. So that's a great low risk entry. Um, really liking that one. So nice work from the gang. Well done, fellas. I think you're hitting your stride. Yeah, so I did some, cons even though I'm on vacation right now, I did some consulting with uh, some folks uh, working with DARPA. That's the Defense Research and Analysis Agency that does a lot of double secret probation stuff. The guys that basically invented the Internet, looking at different applications of artificial intelligence. And so um, they contacted me because they wanted to get an out-of-the-box thinker to take a look at some areas to make sure they were didn't have any blind spots, so even seven or eight scenarios that I thought um, artificial intelligence should be approached the same way that we approach trades and uh, trading setups, looking for asymmetric payoffs where the rewards are all out of proportion compared to the manageable risks that we can take. So trying to find places where if the AI is wrong, that the consequences are minimized on our precious assets, but where the payoff is enormous if it gets it right. So when you start thinking about that that kind of a trade or that kind of a um, system, that really represents what we're trying to do in our critical states, is that we're trying to find something where um, it's poised for big moves in either direction in shorter than normal periods of time. Um, and it's a crapshoot about which way it can go. Uh, and then we don't have a directional bias. We just know the move can be large. Uh, and then we manage accordingly. Well, that's the same kind of principles they're looking at in DARPA to make sure that they're not locked into conventional thinking. So they came to the right place. Um, all right, so here's the daily report. Let's uh, jump to... Our um, first dashboard. Well, I'm reminded tomorrow morning I'm going to talk with uh, my friend, the Danish philosopher Jens Larsen, about developing the protreptic coaching uh, course for us. So uh, uh, I expect I'll be able to put out an announcement on that. <clears throat> sometime this week for a pilot program at some enormously reduced price uh, so we can get that course built. Um, and then the beauty of that is that uh, you can help, if you decide to do that, you can help shape the coaching into what you specifically want it to be. That will help us designing the course and delivering it to your specifications. So there'd be, there's a real advantage uh, into signing up on that. Um, I I will keep the course under 500 bucks. Um, I will persuade him that that's a good idea. Um, he usually commands a much higher fee than that, but uh, he's been doing this for 20 years. But um, I think I can convince him to keep the price down for us, and uh, you'll get plenty of value for the money on that. Uh, more to follow. So um, bullish quiet conditions still. The lack of volatility is kind of remarkable. Uh, overbought on a lot of dimensions, and now back above average on the 10 and the 30. The um, price relative to the 200 went from red back into yellow bullish, so it's already starting to recover from that uh, oversold condition. That first nice bounce was excellent. Um, the risk Z is still above the zero line, so this is still favorable, but it's cautionary. You know, watch out for falling rock, but it's still, the road is still open to the north. Um, 
Still got some overreaction trade room available there on EuroAsia Blend, Asia Less Japan, and uh, the European 350. But the other ones all paid off really strongly, so they're no longer firing signals. That's how good those moves were today. Um, the big winners today, Apple, Microsoft, Visa, Merck, Salesforce, Conventional Tech. Um, J.P. Morgan and Goldman still lagging a bit. Caterpillar lagging a bit. Metals and mining lagging. Handful of dojis today. The only breakout was in Microsoft. Very strong move among all the techs. Got to like that one. Um, Boeing and and uh, American Express have really large, four and a quarter and three and a third. Amazing. Uh, still lots of overreactions and channelings in the Dow, and plenty, plenty of auto framers. So. This would be like my highest priority is framing those out, the ones that still have a long way to go even after today's gains. So these are the ones that are that are having to play catch-up. And you can look at this middle stack in here. They all had really strong days percentage-wise, but they're all testing out very favorably on the auto framer. So that's really a good sign. Uh, in the ETF tactical, kind of the same posture. There's still lots of channeling and overreactions. Still plenty of good auto framers that are firing. Lots of good 551Ws. And there's, you know, there's gold at 8 to 1. I think you got to like that. Um, the auto framers where I'd be spending a lot of time tonight, uh, taking a look at the the individual charts that are appealing. But man, you got tons of things that are, uh, to me, like Caterpillar, J.P. Morgan, and Materials. I mean, how do you argue with five and six and a half to one um, in that mainstream large caps that all did well today that still have plenty of room to go? Um, I think finance uh, still has room to go. I'd be looking at that one hard. Only Merck and Proctor uh, had small range moves today, so there's not so much of a daily squeeze opportunity here as it is a continuation play. Uh, fall is still dominating in both uh, the Dow and the, uh, the ETFs. Uh, note the strength in the in the techs. Strong in the summer. And uh, IBM and Microsoft in the spring, early in the spring, still working hard. The multi time frame NDX summary just shows you, um, in spite of the great big moves, the only thing that got over. Uh, its t previous 10-day high was Microsoft, so that should be on your short list of value generation, low-risk value generating ideas. And uh, the rest of the charts look straightforward. Nice recovery here from the bottom of the river, just as we've said before. Now it's testing the top of the river next. But it really has to get above 425 to be persuasive. So that's the there's still a lid on this thing, all right? All right, that's everything I got for us. Let's get our charts ready and trades framed so we can we will frame those trades so we can trade our frames tomorrow. Take good care.